One of the last division rules that I will teach in my class is typically division rule for six because six is actually a bit of a uh, strange number in how we handle its divisibility. Let us take, for instance, a number, and I know this number will be divisible by six, so let's take a look. Suppose we have the number, oh, 96. And I am certain that this number is divisible by six. The reason is the following. I know that nine plus six is 15. And that means that three divides 96 is a true statement. Likewise, I know that two divides six because six is an even number and that this is true. And from those two simple facts, I make a new fact that's really kind of extraordinary. I can multiply the three and the six together and I can claim that two times three is six and since all of the prime factors in six when separated divided 96, I know that six will divide 96. Now what makes this interesting is we know that two and three are both prime numbers but as a pair of numbers they are relatively prime. So knowing that I can find divisibility by six is defined upon breaking six into two numbers that are relatively prime to one another means that I should be able to do this for other numbers. Let's take a look at an example. Suppose we have the following number and I'm going to make one up but I'm going to make it up so that I'm relatively certain I know some division facts about it. Such as I will have it end in zero so that I know it's evenly divisible by 10, 5, and 2. I also want this number to be divisible by, let's say, 9. So I'm going to pick some numbers to fill in and as I do this, I'm adding these digits in my head and I want them to add up to be a multiple of 9. So if I'm not mistaken, 7 and 3 is 10, 10 and 9 is 19. So let's see, 19 and 1 makes 20 and 20 and 7 makes 27, which is a multiple of 9 big hideous number. But I know things about this number. Now let's watch how I'm going to use what I know. I know this number is divisible by 10. Okay, so. And I know that because it ends in a zero. Now if this is a true statement, I also know that 2 and 5 must also be true statements. Because we added the digits and we know that it works for 9, I know that it works for 9 is true. And if it works for 9, I know it's true for 3. So watch how I'm going to handle this next bit of the problem. My question is, does... Does 90 divide 714-5730? This is my question. Does 90 divide that number? Now, the question the student might have is, is there some type of rule that we're supposed to memorize for division by 90? And the answer is no. What we should do is look at numbers that we know divide 90 into pairs, maybe, let's say. I know that 90 and a convenient factorization of 90 is 9 times 10. Well, look over here to the facts that we know. If I know 10 will divide into this number, 
and if I know 9 divides into this number, and if 10 and 9 are relatively prime, I can multiply the 10 and 9 together, and I claim it divides this number. Well, that logic backwards would say, if I started with the problem, does 90 divide 7145730? Is that true or false? I would factor it into 9 and 10. And then I would check, does 10 divide 7145730? And I would say yes, ends in 0. Then I might ask myself, does 9 divide 7145730? And I would have to say yes, because the sum of these digits is a multiple of 9. And since these were a relatively prime pair, I know their product divides this number. So I can take large numbers that I don't know whether or not they divide into another number, and I can think about how to check to see if they divide large numbers. An example of this would be, let's suppose we were thinking about dividing some big number, by let's say 18. I don't remember any of my rules that said this is how to test for divisibility by 18, but I know 18 has some pairs to it. I know it could be factored and I could say that 3 times 6 is 18. The problem with 3 and 6 though would be that they're not relatively prime. So I think and I say to myself, wait, 2 times 9 is 18 and 2 and 9 are relatively prime. So I would check to see does 2 divide big number, does 9 divide big number, and if you say yes to the 2 and to the 9, then you can say yes to 18 dividing big number. So this pair would be out, this would be the pair that I would check. Likewise, if you wanted to see, let's say, if some big number new big number is divisible, let's say, by 40. Well, what can we do to, this is a 40, not a 42, what can I do to 40 to check it? Well, I can think that this is 4 times 10, but that's not a relatively prime pairing. So maybe what I need to do is think about how I can write this, and I have 2 times 2, times 2 times 5. Can I separate these prime factors into two distinct sets of numbers that will give me relatively prime pairs? And the answer is yes. Put all of the 2's together to make an 8 and the 5 will just leave it alone to be 5. So I would test this new big number for the rule against 5 and the rule for 8. If I get a yes for 5 and a yes for 8, then I know this number, new big number, is in fact divisible by 40. And that's how I use relatively prime pairs to help me take large numbers I may not know things about and turn them into more manageable, smaller numbers.